Zevion Daybreak. Pretty nice map in general for ZVP. I think Z's or Zerg's really like this map just because it's so far away. The rush distances are to a point where I don't think they're as effective for a Protoss. And mm -hmm. the main reason for that is because scouting is pretty nice. Like, you can just put Zerglings in key areas and always catch that initial probe. Mm -hmm. So if they do go to pressure up, it's telegraphed. You know it's coming because with control of the watchtower and then just taking a couple of lanes right here, you can basically shut down, or just this bottom lane actually, you can shut down any scouting abilities or any proxy pylons very easily. Yeah, and at the same time, I, I did ma we did manage to pick uh, pick Idra and Marl's brain a little bit of why they like Daybreak so much. It's because there's also alternate paths to your opponent without making yep. it too messy and too clogged. I mean, even though, th you know, because there, there is the center expansion if or center path if you choose to take out the destructible rocks. There's the north and southern avenues as well. So um, that just gives Zerg a little bit more options. Also, it gives, you know, it gives a little bit of... It, advantage to people who do diligent scouting and positioning with things like that's why you'll see multiple observers sometimes mm -hmm. on the daybreak so we see uh, white raw he is scouting after putting a pylon on the low ground of course he scouts no gas and the way uh, white raw has been playing his quote forge fast expanse he's been going nexus first uh, before any kind of forge and looks like he's gearing up to do that already and i like that you know just being able to be getting up your economy very strong for the mid game not what bad. a bold way to play. Now, Daybreak, obviously, oh. Oh, wow. is super long, but still, to be going such a late forge, this is, <laughs> yeah, is he had 450 a 17 minerals. forge. Yeah. A 17 forge, that's crazy. Yeah. There it is. He will put down the Nexus and the forge at the same time, probably a gateway right after this, and then he starts putting down cannons. That's how, I would say, greedy he is in this beginning stage. But if you can get your Nexus out safely like this, then I would do it every single time. Having this Nexus out here gives him the Chrono Boost, which obviously just supercharges his, his his economy. He can start making probes so fast, and that's probably one of the most important things in a map in a match like PvE. Yep. And uh, it's really important for White Rod to keep the attention of Morrow away from his base. It's going to be quite some. It was a quite a bit of time before the cannon was able to get up, and Morrow saw that with his overlord saying, "Whoa, the cannon is very very late." And you can see uh, that he had an opportunity, of course, but Morrow. Not playing too greedy himself. He's going to try to see if he can get that third hatchery uninhibited, and he does. And Daybreak, a, a map that's very good also for that m m super fast max off Roach style yeah. that we've been iterating nonstop at NASL. And Morrow also saying that he's been practicing that kind of style a little bit as well. So maybe we can see him pull it out a little bit as he is uh, going for those relatively fast hatcheries. Well, I think the advantage right now... No, I wouldn't even say it. Uh, I'm going to retract that. <laughs> I was going to say Morrow is in a really comfortable position. Normally, these hatcheries don't go down uninhibited, but by yeah, them being him placed this early, it makes it alarmingly difficult for White Rod to take his third base. Now, that sounds super uh, into you know foresight and everything and just a, a big assumption on things, but normally White Raw doesn't want to be pressuring. As we said, there's a very few builds that actually work on this map off of two base. You want to be taking your third base some greedy way. And with Morrow being able to place all three of his hatcheries, he actually gets his drones like maximum speed. And with that, he is able to hit at a timing where Protosses feel so uncomfortable. They're like expanding and they're teching to something that deals with mm. ro mass roaches just there. Oh. So yeah. I, I feel like Morrow is in a good position for the map. No, yeah, that's a good point. You can tell that uh, White Rod wanted to go for that third base as well, based off uh, the current movement of his probe. Zerking spots, and Morrow has a pretty good idea as well. Morrow also being very cautious to scout other gas timings. White Rod has been on one gas this entire time, limiting a lot of his tech options. And it's just very interesting because normally you see double gas from Protoss, maybe even triple gas, go for Twilight Council or Stargate of some sort, maybe even a fast robo if you want to get Immortals and Observer out. It's, I think it's because he wants to take this one Nexus all the way over. Yeah. But He's yeah. just been gearing himself to, uh, to just be optimized to have that excess minerals, you know? That's mm. why he's like, okay, I don't have to worry about anything else. I don't even see a ton of gateways being put down. Mm. Now, finally, this uh, one circling will be cleaned up. I like what we're seeing. Ooh, Zealot harass. Yeah, uh, the Zealot is poking at the third, forcing a little bit more lings, and not the best, best position, but still good enough to uh, 
uh, pick off a couple Zerglings. Now, Maro, his speed is going to finish up. And it's interesting because if you were going to go for the Max Roach, at, you know, t 11, 12, 13 minutes, you would go for the first 100 gas of the lair, but he's going for speed and then starting to get other gases. Uh, do you think Marlo's going to pull out uh, more mutas again here on Daybreak? It's very possible, but I think that was a response to how he thinks White Rod likes to play. White Rod does this type of style all over the place. He loves to get super fast thirds or play it a little bit riskier just to get that economic boost and he's able to really do a lot of damage. Getting metabolic boost this fast is not normal, even if you're going mutas. So right now he's saying, I want to have very relevant Zerglings. What is he going to do with them? Well, he can do a lot of damage with pressure, just forcing his opponent to be a little bit more conscious of these run buys or even, oh my god. Oh, oh, the Zerglings do get a surround on the, outs uh, on the outside Zealot. And Moro is forcing a lot more units here. He's going to try to see if he can run by as well. And will Rightwar get back in time? He will. It's a very, very big key play. But the third is also pretty exposed other than one cannon. And he's not able to protect it. Although Moro trying to see if he can go on the outskirts. I thought he was going to try to see if he could pick off uh, the next from a weird angle. But does see the third very easily. And, and these. Oh, Double man. robotics facility. <laughs> That's pretty huge. Yeah. That's what I was oh godding about. And it looks like it will be a variation of what Demaga likes to do. This is a Zergling, well, mass Zergling and a double upgrades. No Baneling Nest added just yet. But oh my god, the Zealots for White Ra mm. are just so true in at this point. They, they are so mean. Yeah, I don't know they why they don't just listen. Just hold position, man. And, yeah, I mean, he's just getting out of position every single time. The Zerglings get in, see everything harassing, and this Nexus is in complete jeopardy. Jeez. And uh, he's... I feel like Morrow, he's able to really pick this off if you just focus on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. A read the Zerglings to make sure the Zells have to walk a little bit further to get it. And White Raw, ooh, oh. is this Nexus going to drop? It will. I mean, down to the very last Zergling. And so, that sucks yeah. because now the sentries don't have energy. So those force fields are wasted, theoretically. Mm -hmm. And really, Morrow yeah. can do anything at this point. It's two base economy, less than two base economy. Income tab, 51 harvesters to 86. The third base for White Raw is just emerging right now, which is his old main. But he has no ability to tech pretty dynamically. Yes, he has double robo, but you don't have the economy to actually sustain this. Yeah, he doesn't. He can't really do much. But let's look at, again back at what just happened uh, between White Raw and Morrow. Now, the big thing is that Morrow, again, look at this. He rearranged his Zergans because he saw the Warpin on the left side and then immediately targeted down. It was a close call. And don't let anyone say that there no, there's no such thing as one Zergan that doesn't matter as it came down to the very last hit. We're back in game now where Morrow is just continuing to make additional Zerglings. I like where we're at. And he is teching to Spire. So you're absolutely right. Absolutely right, Frodan. Spire tech is inbound. Now I do want to mention that this double robotics facility build has been mitigated a little bit just on the fact that it's Zerkling mm -hmm. Baneling Spire. Oh. Yeah. Right? And I mean uh, immortals don't do nearly as well as let's say Colossus. <laughs> and it just takes two immortals to buy a Colossus. Or three immortals to buy two Colossus. Uh, close to Somewhere that. around there. Uh, there's that. a lot of mineral, but the, the point is, immortals are a big investment, and their direct, their composition directed at a specific composition from your opponent, which are and roaches, uh, of course. Yeah, um, and so White Raw won't necessarily have the best composition. Now, Blink is really important also for his stalkers, uh, but it's also you know kind of dangerous too because if you ever get out of position, sure your stalkers will blink back, but then all your sentries, zealots, and mortals also get surrounded. So Morrow has a pretty good thing going for him right now. His fourth base is pretty easy to get as well. You see a lot of upgrades in production, baneling speed, oh. plus one. Um, you know, and he's not getting drop. We thought originally, you know, if he's going to go for that full Demaga yeah. style, he would get drops at least, but he's not going to go. He's just going to uh -oh. go for it anyways. And units are terribly out of position. There's the four seals to actually stop a lot of this, but he kills the sentries and nice. he doesn't have any more incoming sentries. The Zerglings are mm. going to go all the way around to the left-hand side. I don't think that he can get in 
but still a lot of damage has been done, killing those sentries and power the Zerglings, and now they will be able to do a combination attack against the big army of White Raw. And White Raw is under a huge amount of pressure. The Zerglings finally find access. Now he's following them, not really paying attention because they are going to one cannon, but the main is also being assaulted, and Blink is not finished. Oh man, imagine if the Blink was being targeted by Morrow. How clutch would that be? But for now, Morrow is playing very beautifully, pulling White Raw to and fro trying to make sure that he can never be comfortable enough to mass and you can tell you know he white raw has been on three base for a while but still only on 55 probes because of how many workers marl has oh. been able to kill and what does he have to do against this oh my goodness he's got no centuries so many banelings he's got no centuries yeah, that's what's need, so cool about you this. need centuries against this style and we're not going to see anything too nice. Mm. I mean, no AOE. Dark Please. Templars are inbound. Okay, Dark Templars Archons. help out a lot if he makes Archons. If he makes Archons, uh, but he, he might not have the opportunity to. The Dark Templar for now is just acting as a filter oh. for the Zerglings, but he gets a full surround. Moro completely crushing the initial army, and White Rod only has a few Stalkers left to tell the tale. More Dark Templars are warping in immediately and trying to aid of the onslaught of Protoss. You see that White Rod going to his high ground, but he's only got one Stalker left and three Zelda and that is not enough to hold it off. GG, well played. Moro takes game number three and the series. Very impressive play. Wyra unfortunately falls victim to the Zealot that does not like to listen. It's and he loses his zealot, Nexus man. for it. Scumbag Actually, Zealot. <laughs> seriously. Pay, you pay him his wages zealot and he does not listen to you. That's what he is. But, hmm. you know, I don't know if that one area was actually big enough to stop all those Zerklings. I, it might have needed one zealot two. Yeah. I plugged it. I'm not sure. I have mm. to go back into the replay and look at it. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, obviously still it's a problem. The Zergling run by. It was just straight mm. up Zerglings. You are not supposed to die to that. I think Morrow actually missed his timing. He wants to kill the Nexus before any of that SimCity actually gets established. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why you get the Metabolic Boost so early. You're anticipating your opponent doing something like an 8-minute Nexus. But once Morrow kills his opponent's main what can you really do from there? You're so far behind. Your economy is behind. You, the development of your units are behind. You wasted Sentry Force Shields. You have no imminent threat. Or you can't, as the protest, you can't do anything yeah. to threaten your opponent. So they're just like, I will take my expansions. I will do anything do I want to. Want. I won't make any spine crawlers, And I will win the game. And Morrow takes a series, getting revenge onto White Raw after losing the past few series at the IEM World Championships and the SC Reddit Tournament. Guys, that game and series was brought to you by Kingston HyperX, the company providing lots of great SSD and memory. Uh, check them out at kingston.com. We'll be back with more action from Division 5 as well as a cool segment. Don't go anywhere. NASL Season 3, day number whatever. This is day number 20, actually, is, uh, is just getting underway.